Hey everyone, it's Holly. I'm back with another general Java game development tutorial. Um, I was meant to release one yesterday, but I had to, I'm having to re-record this now because the file was corrupted, which is kind of annoying, but I'm going to do this again, and what we're doing today is we're building an animator class, and we're going to be animating uh, sprites from the sprite sheet we did last time. Um, I have my main class set up here. Uh, the source code for this will be in the description. And let's go ahead and create a new class called animator. And we've already got our sprite sheet class and our buffered image loader. So uh, they're all ready to go and we'll be using those. So what we need to do for the animation is we need an array list to hold uh, many different buffered images which are going to be the frames of the animation and then using an update method in the animator class we're going to set a single a single buffered image uh, called sprite or something like that we're going to set that equal to one of the sprites in the array list to effectively sort of loop through all the ones in the array list so the first thing we'll make is that array list array list um, of buffered images and we'll call this frames and we're going to need to import both of those things. Um, and then what we're going to need is uh, another buffered image. Uh, called sprite. And that's going to be the buffered image that we set equal to the ones in the frames. So the first thing we're going to do is make the constructor public animator. And this is going to take an array list of buffered images. I'll just copy and paste that. And then we'll set this dot frames equals frames. All right, so now that we've initialized the uh, frames uh, thing, the frames array list of the buffered images, uh, we can begin to make uh, the methods. So the first method we'll need is an update method. And that's going to be, we're going to place the update method somewhere where in our game where it's constantly updated and that's going to make sure your animation is updated so public void update um, and we're actually going to need some variables first of all we're going to need uh, speed of the animation and we're going to need stuff uh, like previous time before time that we'll call what that we'll use in the update loop so let me uh, make those now uh, let's see we'll need a uh, a boolean value uh, which will make volatile and we'll call this running and it can equal false initially and we're going to make a uh, start stop pause and resume methods uh, I'll make those now public void start and copy and paste this four times um, start stop pause and resume and they're each going to do slightly different things uh, in start we're going to set running equal to true and we'll do some other stuff there but for now we'll just uh, leave that like that and then in stop we'll set running equal to false um, so now we can make a while running loop um, so this is our uh, update loop and we're going to need uh, some more variables. I'm trying to remember from the last time I recorded this. Um, we're going to need uh, some integers or long variables rather. And that's remind me in the update loop we need a long uh, variable called time. And basically we need some way of telling the update method how long has passed since the last uh, loop or whatever. And that comes in the form of um, a time that we give it, maybe it's like a, a, a custom game time you've made, or in this case, I'm going to use uh, system dot current time millis because that's just the easiest way to do it. Uh, we're going to need um, before time, previous time, and time at time at pause, which is going to actually not time at pause. We're going to need an integer for that private int frame at pause and the reason we need this is the difference between pause and stop is pause is gonna stop it on the current frame and make sure it continues from that frame 
but where it's stop is going to reset the animation and when you play it again it would play it from the first frame so uh, in our while running method we first need to check if oh yeah that's the other thing we need we need speed there we go the speed of the animation and we'll make a quick method there public void set speed um, long speed and that's going to be in milliseconds all right so what we need to do is we need to check if the time uh, we need to check if the current time minus the previous time is greater than the speed and that will show we need to update the method so we need to update the animation rather so if um what was it um i don't think we need before time we can remove that so if time which is the current time coming from the update loop if the time minus the previous one is greater than or equal to the speed that means we need to update the animation and then we'll do some stuff here and then at the end of it we need to set previous time equal to time uh, so again what that does is a uh, time it we need to check if the correct amount of time has passed for the frame to switch so say when the game starts time is equal to zero um, that means previous time we will initialize previous time in a bit but say time and previous time are both equal to zero, then um, zero minus zero is not greater than uh, say say we want it to be 500 milliseconds so it updates every half second uh, then say time goes time goes to 500 then 500 minus 0 is greater than or equal to 500 so it can update the loop and then previous time would be set to 500 and then it can all start again so um, that's it's I would say it's self-explanatory but maybe it might be a bit more bit trickier than that but uh, post a comment if you still don't understand and I'll try and help but anyway what we need to do now is uh, update the animation so we're actually going to need another integer called current frame and what this is going to do is we're going to actually use try and catch because i think that's the easiest way to do it and we need to i forget which error it is um we'll find out in a second i think it's index out of bounds um but what we're going to do is we're going to try and set the sprite which is the singular buffered image up here and we're going to make this public because we're going to be using it and we can make the frames private we're going to uh, we're going to be using the sprite uh, in our paint method or wherever you want to draw it uh, so what we need to do is we need to try and say first of all as soon as this uh, if statement is entered it means we need to go up one frame so we can say current frame plus plus damn it plus plus there we go and then we can say we can try and say uh, sprite is equal to frames dot get index and if it gives me the java docs there we go uh, yeah throws index out of bounds exception so we'll add that in a second so we try and get the current frame and then catch the index out of bounds exception e and if it is caught then we need to say current frame equals zero and then we need to set the sprite equal to frames dot get current frame um so what that does is uh, again i've explained this so when once once the animation needs to update we say we add one to the current frame and then we try and set the sprite equal to uh the next frame if it can then that's good it'll carry on uh if it if the frame if it goes one above uh, the amount of frames that there actually are it's going to catch the exception reset the current frame and then set the sprite equal to that frame and then finally we set the previous time equal to the time now uh, which allows us to re-enter this loop here uh, be careful that the previous time is inside this if statement because if it's outside then your animation will never update uh, unless your computer runs very slowly at some point um, so now we're going to program the start and stop methods etc so for start we need to initialize all these variables here so we can set previous time and frame at pause and current frame uh, so previous time equals zero uh, frame at pause equals zero 
and current frame equals zero. Um, now for the stop method, we can actually uh, reset these things as well here. So once those are reset, we can, uh, let's program the pause method. So what we need to do is we need to set the frame at pause equal to the current frame. So it grabs the current frame that it's on and sets it equal to that. Uh, we then need to set running equal to false. And then anything else we need to do, uh, that should be it. And then for resume, we can set the current frame equal to the frame at pause. And then we can set running equal to true. So now that those are programmed, there's one last thing, I believe. Maybe not. Have we? Oh, yeah, we've already done the set speed method. Um, so let's go over to the main method here. I've already programmed, I've already grabbed things from our sprite sheet. Oh, the sprite sheet I had last time. I'm not going to open it. You can see the little Mario thumbnail down here. I've got eight Mario sprites. And I've already grabbed the coordinates, which are here. Uh, you can pause the video and copy those down if you're using the same sprite sheet as I am. Again, link in the description for source code and the image, etc. Uh, so what I've done is I've used the buffered image loader and uh, the sprite sheet to get a sprite sheet image. And then I've set, I've created a new sprite sheet with that image. And then I've created an array list of buffered images called sprites. And then I've added three sprites, which are basically three frames. And now what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to make a new animator object up here. Animator, uh, let's call it Mario. And then down here, I'm going to set Mario equals new animator and then I can give sprites as the parameter and then I can say Mario dot set speed and let's say uh, 200 milliseconds per frame and then I can say Mario dot play um, maybe I made it private by accident let me check oh no wait I named it start I'm going to name it play because that seems like a better name for an animation to play the animation. Um, okay, so now in paint component down here, uh, if Mario is not equal to null, then Mario, no, g dot draw image, Mario dot sprite. Um, let's just draw it at 100, 100. And we'll say we'll make the sprite like 50 by 50 so you can easily see it. And let me check. I think I need to make this smaller. Or oh, it might fit on the screen, I'm not sure. Let's run this. Um, okay, one second, let me check this out. Oh, and uh, obviously we need to call our update method, which we made. Uh, since paint component is a constantly looping thing because we pull it through paint the paint method uh, we can say mario dot update and we can give it the parameter of the system dot current time millis and now when we run this it will hopefully not have anything so let me check this again oh okay and i figured out the problem in the update method in the animator this was while but it should be if instead of while because um since we're calling this within a loop, it only needs to be an if statement uh, because it's effectively already in a while statement. So make sure that is that, otherwise it's everything's going to break. Uh, and then you can hit uh, run, and then you can see the animated sprite with the buffered images that you've given it. And you can change the speed to be faster or slower. Uh, let's see if we can make it faster. Change it to 100. Clay. And you can see that the sprite is moving faster, and then obviously you could set it slower and whatever. And I've kind of got the uh, pixel dimensions a bit wrong for the sprite sheet, but you get the idea. Uh, so hopefully that's all made sense to you. Now you've got uh, sprite sheets, uh, image loaders, and you've got an animator class. So um, hopefully you can, you guys can all put that together and make some awesome games with it. So that's it from me now. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, like, like it, uh, post a comment and subscribe if you're enjoying the series. And people ask me when the next intermediate tutorial is coming out with the kind of 
two D Minecraft that we're making. Uh, I I plan to continue that, but uh, I'm kind I'm liking this series at the moment. I might see if someone else could uh, film the next tutorial of those for me, but uh, I guess we'll see. So uh, thanks for watching again, guys, and I'll see you next time.